My name is Wayne Omura. I am the Secretary Treasurer of the Maui Woodturners Association. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization here on the island. Our organization's goal is to provide awareness, education, and the promotion of woodturning here on the island of Maui. Today, in this segment of Artisan Profile, the series, I will be showing you how I create my wood bowls from either Cook Island Pine or Norfolk Island Pine beginning from a block such as this. So stay tuned as I take you through the process in how I create my wood bowls. What I have done now is I have mounted the blank between centers. What I'll do next is I will rough shape the general profile of the bowl down to where I can attach a face plate here. Once I put the face plate on, I will reverse the bowl and refine the profile. I will begin this process now. So prior to turning off and taking off the bowl, I made a little circle here with the ink pen so I can basically put my faceplate and center the faceplate on this piece. And now I'll just put in the screws and I like faceplates. Some people like to use three jaw chucks and clamp their piece to the uh, headstock. I prefer to use face plates. It's just a personal preference for some but some people like face plates, some people like three jaw chucks. So now I will be attaching the block of wood to the lathe. So now I have reversed the bowl with the face plate, brought the center up to keep it more secure, and I will begin the process of refining the shape of the bowl. Now, everybody that I know 
has their own way of doing things when you rough turn an end grain bowl. Now, different people will tell you different things and everyone has their own method. My method is not the only method. It is just something that I feel comfortable with in practice all these years. So I'll begin showing you how I rough turn the rest of the bowl on this. Before I go any further refining the shape of this rough turn bowl, I'd like to explain that there are basically two types of bowl turning techniques. There is end grain turning where your bowl blank is oriented parallel to the tree, such as what I have here. And there is side grain bowl turning where your bowl blank is situated such that you turn perpendicular to the tree. Depending on how you orient your block in side grain wood turning will determine the grain pattern that shows up in your bowl. Side grain bowl turning has a different technique from end grain turning. For myself, I do all my Cook Island Pine and Norfolk Island Pine primarily through end grain turning because what I have found is that end grain turning brings out the natural translucent colors of the wood. So I will continue working and refining this piece. One of the key things with end grain turning is that you start from the center going toward the rim of the bowl. In side grain turning, it is the opposite. You go from the rim toward the center. But in end grain turning, it is reversed. That's the main difference between end grain and side grain turning. This is how I reduce the sides of the bowl. This is the completed rough turn bowl. I will now coat it with sealer and place it on my shelf to dry. I will date the bowl so that I can see how long the bowl has been drying on the shelf. In wood turning terms, this is called double turning. Double turning because you turn the bowl while it's moderately green and wet in this rough turn form. You leave it on the shelf to let it dry 
and when it's dry, you bring it back to the machine to refinish. And that is why in wood turning terms, it's called double turning. The reason behind this is that as the wood dries, the roundness of the bowl will change. It will warp a little bit. By doing it the second time around, you eliminate the warpage and you end up with a round bowl. I like to do it with Norfolk Island pine and cook pine because you need to go a little thinner than most bowls in trying to bring out the translucent colors of the wood. And that's why I do all my end grain bowls double turned. So now I'll coat it and put it back on the shelf. I mounted a dry bowl now and I will be begin finishing the bowl. I use this 3 8 inch Doug Thompson bowl gouge to do the outside and I'll sand it completely before hollowing the inside. So I'll begin the process now. One little trick that I use is that with my index finger, I run it along the base of the tool rest so that I get a straight even cut. Once I finish up to this stage, I will sand the bowl because I'm satisfied with the shape and I'll begin sanding. The rim. But as I do my pine bowls, I go one inch. At a time, going down, progressively down through the bowl. That causes less vibrations to the final piece. So I'll take a first cut leveling off the bowl. Once I'm here, I never go back to there again. So I'll go to the next step and go down.
satisfied with how the inside of the bowl was turned, so now I'm going to begin sanding the bowl. Like the outside, I will start and progressively work with my grits all the way up to 320 grits. And once that's done, it'll be ready for its oil soak. I have now finished the outside and the inside of the bowl and the next step in my process will be to have this bowl soak in a concoction of linseed oil and mineral spirit. I will let this soak for a day or so. I am now removing the bowl from the vat and I'll let it hang and drip the excess oil back into the vat and then put it on my shelf to dry. So now I have the bowl just drying on the shelf and waiting for the finish to dry a little bit. And once it's done, I will finish it off and turn the bottom foot. It's uh Now that I'm done with the outside of the bowl and inside of the bowl, I measure the depth, put my little tracker right here, and I'll measure the foot. And I have about an inch and a quarter of clay from the base of here to here, to the, the bottom of the bowl. That is important to know as I do the foot. There's one part I'd like to explain. I leave my face plate on until this portion when I turn down the foot of the bowl because how I do it is that I put in a adapter to the tailstock, reverse the bowl, turn on the vacuum, then I remove the face plate. Using this device keeps the bowl centered so I don't have to fiddle around getting the foot of the bowl centered on the air vacuum chuck and that way the foot of the bowl is turned evenly when upon finishing the base of the bowl.
So at this point I've completed the bowl, I've turned the foot on the bowl of these. And basically I'm satisfied with the outside and the inside of the bowl. So if I put it under a light like this, top directed light, I'll leave it here. And you can see that there is some translucence in the bowl. So at this point I am completed and this is how I do my Cook Island Pine and Norfolk Island Pine wood bowls. How I got interested in wood turning? When I was attending school at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, I went to this store in Waikiki called The Following Seas. And while I was there, I saw this large Norfolk Island Pine platter. And I was simply amazed at the colors and the size of this wonderful piece of art. I was mystified. I had no clue how the maker created such a wonderful piece. And at that point, I told myself, I want to learn and be able to do something like this one day. After graduating, work, marriage, family soon followed. That allowed me time only on nights, weekends, and holidays to pursue my interests. Back then, in 1981 or so, the internet was not available to the general public. So my learning was basically through reading books, reading magazines, and to trial and error. I made a lot of mistakes and errors along the way, though I did eventually learn. I am a self-taught wood turner, so I would attribute my learning to the school of hard knocks. And that is why I recommend anyone, whether you're a professional, intermediate level, beginner, or you just have an interest in wood turning, to join the Maui Wood Turners Association. We bring in local, mainland, and international wood turners who share their skill set, their styles, their ideas, their tips that we can incorporate in our own practice, in our own shops, at our own pace. Your skill levels will grow. I've also found that as a wood turner, we tend to work in isolation. By interacting with other wood turners who have the same interests as we do, you share ideas and tips and everyone's skill levels improve. And as your skill level improves, that shows up in your own work. And to me, that is what life is all about, learning and doing the best you can at something that you enjoy doing. And that is the goal of the Maui Wood Turners Association. Learning, education, and the promotion of wood turning. For myself, I have learned more in the past four years than the last 34 years working alone. Having a group of artists that are willing to teach will help make wood turning more enjoyable. So if you have an interest in wood turning, join the Maui Wood Turners Association. Come and check us out. I will guarantee this will be the best decision you will ever make. Maui Wood Turners Association. Check us out. As a final note, mark your calendars for November 16th. The Maui Wood Turners Association will be sponsoring a gifts and craft fair sale at 300 Kealaloa Avenue in Makwao from 9 to 4. Members from our club will be selling hand-turned items that can be used as stocking stuffers and as gifts for family and friends, as Christmas is just around the corner. You can also check us out on the web at www.mawiwoodturners.com or on Facebook at the same address. You can also use Facebook to keep up with our local events and activities throughout the year. In closing, I would like to say thank you for watching this segment in the series, Artists in Profile.